Hey Doombots, Tony Scangilli here with his first video on Disney Sorcerer's Arena. Now, just if you aren't aware, Disney Sorcerer's Arena is a 5v5 strategy game that is currently in beta, uh, inaccessible to most of the players, but should be going live around March of 2020, uh, global launch. Uh, it will be available for Android, iPhone, etc. And uh, what I wanted to do was kind of give an intro video and my, my initial thoughts of the game. So I wanted to do that about a week in, and uh, I was in the middle of a, an Aladdin event. So I said, you know, let me wait for the end of the event, get a real taste for what was happening. At the end of the Aladdin event, a event for Lion King started. So I said, you know, that timing was a little off. Let me wait till two weeks, and I'll give it a shot. And now here we are three weeks in. Uh, and a new event had started, and I figured that's the best place to start this video. This game seems to be, at least right now in the beta, very event-oriented. Now, what you don't know is what are events. Events are character release mechanisms that allow players to use their existing roster to not only unlock special or marquee characters, but build up some characters that you may not have uh, great or any access to and for example the Aladdin event uh, You had a higher chance of getting Aladdin genie and Jasmine which were characters necessary to Obtain Jafar the marquee character of that event So I probably wouldn't have as strong an Aladdin or a Jasmine as I do right now if there wasn't an event around that and then moving into the Lion King event the two characters that you receive for basically just playing in the event at all are Rafiki and Simba. And the stronger they get, the easier it will become for you to unlock Scar. The current event that's running right now is called the Queen of Hearts event, which is interesting because you don't unlock anyone from Alice in Wonderland, you in fact unlock Emperor Zurg from Toy Story. But this event requires characters that have the same tag as Emperor Zurg, which is villain downtown so all of your villain and downtown characters are capable uh, of being used and the stronger they are the more likely you are to unlock emperor zerg i can say now especially when launch happens if this kind of release cadence continues that events are king in this game so whenever you're playing if you're starting this game or if you're just currently in the beta if you're seeing this video and you're like i wonder if i'm interested in whatever current event is active that's going to really change not only what you could be doing but what you might choose to do if you start during say a moana event you might have access to things that other players didn't or won't before it comes back so you may end up with a maui or a moana and, and really have a different start than someone who had started like me during the Aladdin event and was super interested in building up those characters. Events are, as of right now, one of the most interesting parts of this game and it kind of keeps the game very fresh. So I'm a little afraid to say there's any one right or wrong choice and I'm gonna play for a little bit longer as I release more videos that discuss how I'm interacting with characters and how I feel they work before I start saying well if you don't if you don't have access to this character from this event you're gonna have a bad time which is a great way to segue into the second point which uh, comes from the fact that I'll just show you my collection really quick I have a pretty decent number of characters unlocked at a pretty decent level for my time played, my three weeks played. And what I will say is, if it wasn't for the Aladdin event, I definitely wouldn't have an Aladdin and a Jasmine this high up in my roster. And if it wasn't for the Lion King event, I definitely wouldn't have Rafiki, Simba, and Scar, obviously. But I do feel like the way I was able to build my roster because of the event has given me a unique experience that hasn't necessarily set me apart uh, either ahead or behind of other players who may have started at a slightly different time with different levels of, of access. Uh, it just gave me a little bit of a different color as to what I would see when someone else may start after me and not necessarily have access to Simba and Rafiki. I'm also noticing something interesting me, my club, 
and the people I play with and talk to about this all the time, we've all decided to go in a little bit different direction with our daily farming of who we're working on. But we all kind of have a different take of what we enjoy to do. And none of us are doing particularly bad. We're excelling in the parts of the game that we are able to access at this low level, at level 40, where the level cap is, of course, 60 right now. And what that's telling me is there really isn't a wrong path, at least as of the beta, as of right now, for you to take. Now, you need access to heroes and villains' characters to progress in their respective campaigns, but outside of that, you really don't have to worry about which specific one you work on. Now, I know as a newer player, I believe you get Ariel, Mickey, Sully, and Buzz Lightyear for free, as you progress and that might be good enough to just kind of work on those t characters for as long as you want they seem to be adequate and if it wasn't for the events i probably would have them among the top characters you can even see they're not that far away in comparison to the rest of my roster well mickey was but whatever and and that just tells me that uh, as a player you don't have to stick to any one particular rule Obviously, there are good, better, and best choices, but I don't think there are any bad choices except one character, and I'm not even going to mention her name right now. I think you can just kind of, if, if you get lucky and you decide to open a chest and get a lot of one character shards, if your earliest unlock is just say Judy Hops or Anger or Scrooge McDuck, you know, Sergeant Calhoun, if, if they... If that's who you want to work on, I don't think you're really losing out on anything. I think the game is, characters are well balanced and they all feel very rewarding, especially as you invest in them. And speaking of investing, we'll go into the third point I have uh, regarding this game. And that is that we have come up with the idea of the fours in this game. And that is up until you get characters to about four star gear tier four and level 40 you're not going to really see what that character can do and the reason why is actually very simple and i'll use aladdin as an example let me just change him back to regular aladdin at level four you unlock the ability to upgrade most of the character's attacks uh, to level two and the level two unlock on most of the characters and i'll just take you through this real quick uh tend to be a uh, a feature of the ability. This one is 30% chance to reduce turns meter. This one gives Aladdin evasion, which are abilities we'll go into in another video. And the level three, these tend to be damage or in some situations health or in some situations how long they they heal. You know, like it, it's a little it's a little different based on characters, but the the rank two is when you you, or the level two ability is when you really get to feel what the character does. It also has the added effect of unlocking the leadership ability of characters. For example, Shan Yu unlocks his ability to give all characters with the kingdom tag 8% bonus speed whenever he's on the team. And that's something that's so important to why he is a good character that until you get to gear tier four, you won't feel it and the reason four star is important is just based on how the characters grow and progress how their stats go up up until about four star and you know by comparison we can look at a sully who is four star 218 power and a hopper who is three star same level same basic ability same gear tier and a solid 20 power less and 20 power is a meaningful amount because the difference between my Aladdin and my Dr. Facilier is less than 20 and it, it's still a noticeable amount uh, it's it's really just an issue of of where the powers come in it in this game stars do matter so the, sh the more stars you get in a character the stronger they're gonna end up being overall plus so if you aren't sure about a character i know it might take some resources but you're really not going to get the full picture of a character until you get them to four star gear tier four at least during the leveling process obviously 
when the end game catches up and everyone has level 60 gear tier 6 characters, it might become a bit of a different struggle. I'm not there yet, so I'm not going to speak about it. The last thing I wanted to point out as far as tips and tricks or something I'd wish I had known prior to uh, starting this game and something hopefully you guys will be watching this video wondering either, hey, I just started or should I play this game? is the value of being in a good club. A good club being a club that's very communicative, very uh, helpful and talkative and, and really help per progress. Now clubs in this game, alliances, guilds, you're familiar with the concept, they're 50 player maximum groups and as you sort through, there's a couple of features of clubs that you may or may not know from other games. The first is summoner score, which we'll you keep track of how strong you are compared to everyone else. Oh, look, it's my dad. Uh, and you can kind of just keep track of who's in, who's been progressing, who might be a little bit falling behind, who might need help. You can also donate your gear to these players and excess gear you may have. People make requests like, hey, I need this. And if you happen to have a couple extra, by all means, feel free to donate. You can do the same too. You can ask, hey, I need some of this gear for a character I'm working on. And anyone who might have extra can easily give them to you. Uh, you also for free, costs you nothing, have the ability to fulfill requests. And these requests are amazing because they can give you anything from free energy so you can do attacks to refreshes in stores if you want to see uh, something that might come up. Uh, and a couple of other things, the ability to get more arena attacks in so you can fight up against other players more. It, really, really helpful and being in a very active club will aid you in, in, in your progress. Additionally, there is another great feature that I hope they expand upon uh, when this game goes live into uh, global launch, and that is the fact that when a player in your club makes a purchase, uh, for example, if I were to spend $20 on gems, the in-game currency would allow you to refresh uh, character nodes so you can farm more characters, Everyone in the club gets a, a benefit. For example, if I bought this, everyone in the club, including myself, gets 5,000 gold, 2,000 potions, and 200 club coins. Club coins are a currency that you can use in the club store. There's plenty of different stores and plenty of different ways to progress your roster. That's a different video for a different time. And, and it doesn't seem like much, but it, it really can help some players who maybe are free to play or, or don't have the ability to spend as much money progress uh, in comparison to other people who are willing or capable of spending money. So it's a great little feature that helps players grow and helps an alliance grow as a whole. And that's uh, something phenomenal that I would like everyone going into this game to know. Getting into a good or active alliance or club is going to help you greatly. Other than that, overall, I'd say that I have had a very positive experience in this beta. I look forward to the global launch. As a matter of fact, I look forward to the last month or so of this beta just to get a feel to see what else they're doing. I don't have any major criticisms at all at this point. So as of right now, the game doesn't seem like particularly against free to play players or particularly pro free to play players. Nothing has ever seemed stale or stagnant. It's just been a very active game and I've been enjoying every second of it. And the most important thing I can say about this game is there is a game mode that at any time you can enter and do an attack. And if that doesn't sound like a big deal for you, let me explain. Most game modes have uh, timed uh, events. So energy, which you use to access campaign nodes so you can farm characters or progress your uh, power or gain experience. Those uh, are gated by time. Over time, you can accrue more energy. The same thing, you get a limited amount of certain things every day. You can get five attacks in the arena, I'm sorry, in the, the Sorcerer's Tournament, or you can get five attacks or so in the Club Dungeon, which is the raid feature of this game. But this game mode, PvP Arena, this is a game mode where I can, at any point in time, take a team, put a team together, and fight against either a random player or a gen uh, randomly generated robot, if no one else is playing right now, and test a team out. Obviously there are rewards. They're not amazing rewards, but 
the fact that at any point in time I can unlock a character and give them a shot and see how they feel without needing energy, huge, huge and amazing testing environment. Even though you might lose a game here or there, at least you can see what a character does without having to wait for energy or feeling the need to spend. And that's a huge plus that I, I truly couldn't uh, imagine enjoying this game nearly as much as I do now without it. So that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully this was succinct and quick and hopefully this uh, turned a maybe into a yes if you were interested in downloading this game. As I had mentioned earlier, uh, there will be more videos uh, as we approach Global Launch and then of course upon Global Launch where I kind of review characters and talk about my experiences as well as taking characters that other players in my group have uh, worked on and giving you their experiences. I just want to give everybody the, the most honest uh, assessment of characters that I can prior to going into global launch. Uh, so hopefully you guys will subscribe, like, comment below if you have any questions. I'll try to answer any of them and uh, come back for more of these uh, DSA videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli and I'll catch you later.